appears we are blessed with a pretty light haunt today. We're going straight to the spinning coaster as the line is just opened up. All right, let's not waste any time spinning rings. Spinning dragons all done. This ride I did last night and uh, that was at Six Flags St. Louis. I've done another version of it at Six Flags New England. And really, it's the same thing. It's a decent spinning coaster. We got a little bit of a spin going, but uh, nothing special. It wasn't too rough, which was nice. So definitely enjoyed it. of authority. We're getting on to 4.37, or sorry, 4.37, 6.37. I know it's not dark yet, but the monsters are late. Where are the monsters? probably go to some haunts. Although I just noticed that we've been locked in here. Mm. Maybe it's going to get worse for us. This event has over 400 actors and they are led as they should be by security. <laughs> I love that touch. This is amazing. Uh, we'll see you later. Hello. Oh, there's so many. All hands on. Ah! Oh no! <laughs> oh, that's the best outfit going right there. Freddy, Freddy, Kitty, Freddy. Kitty! You want to die? All right, Everybody's entrance is following complete. Following the creatures to the houses. I'm gonna do the houses much later. So I've completely flipped what I said I was gonna do, which is do the roller coasters at the end. And I've just done the two roller coasters that I meant to do here at the beginning. Now we're gonna go in the opposite direction of where that crowd went try to get on some houses on this side. The majority, the majority of the houses are actually on the other side of the park. But we're gonna do our best. We're definitely gonna get everything in. It's not too busy today. Anywhere else 
I've seen lights like that on stages for concerts. So that's a very creative use of what is a readily available effect used to full effect on a bridge. Completely different atmosphere here at Worlds of Fun Haunt now. <laughs> yeah, fast pass with the dog. Okay, so that was the uh, zombie eye done. That was actually very effective and creative. With any of these haunts that you can't film in, it's hard to remember every fine detail. But essentially, you went through every classroom in Zombie High. I enjoyed like the film room where there was a film being shown, and a guy kind of came out of the projection room and attacked you. You met the principal to start. There was a lot of very effective stuff, but the main fulcrum of the haunt was a section where you're basically going through and weaving through uh, a center hallway that has all these chairs and everything strewn about. Lots of blood, lots of carnage, obviously. A fair amount of anim animatronics. Not the most effective that I've seen at a haunt this year, but uh, definitely a nice touch. The decor, definitely an eight out of 10. It was very well done. Um, but outside of that, uh, yeah, pretty good. Pretty good start here. I'd say that's probably gonna be one of the better mazes in this event, but we'll see soon enough. Prowler looking majestic in the night. That is the only section of the ride that's lit, however. What a wild ride. I feel like some of these GCIs uh, at these parks, like say the park I was at yesterday, today, um, Roar, down at Six Flags America, these are really uh, underrated rides, especially at night, because that was awesome. It was no Screaming Eagle from yesterday, but it was definitely a wild ride. And you know you're in a great ride when even the people on the ride are like, oh my god, that was so much more crazier without being able to see anything. Because yeah, it really, there is nothing in this ride that is lit once you get out to the far court, uh, sections of the course. And not an easy one that you can get on camera because it's in the forest. I also realized that I hadn't reviewed Patriot or Spinning Dragons, so I did kind of review Spinning Dragons, which was okay, um, but it's a clone, so I didn't really deserve any type of mention. Patriot, I did uh, I did get on Patriot, and what a nice ride. A great little B&M, maybe a little short. Reminded me a bit of uh, Raptor in a way, with the way the track was laid out, until you get to that Immelman section, which reminded me of Black Mamba in a way. Definitely enjoyed it, can't wait for a night ride. Great color scheme. I haven't been in a while, I feel like. Alright, right move made earlier. Definitely a Zambezi is closed yet again. Ah, I gotta play off those lights. It's very effective. We're having an amazing time in Worlds of Fun today. That is a good thing, that's a good thing. to Pumpkin Eater. It seems a little weird because this seems like a train station to me. Maybe I'm going the wrong way. We'll find out. We have some great looks of Zambezi, however, not running on this side, which uh, I'll treat you to. That would be the shot you want if it was running. Uh, yeah. One thing about Worlds of Fun, they, they don't lack a space here. Hello. Hello. 
She said don't go, but I don't think I should take her advice. I think I should go. Something evil has been stirred. That guy sounds like my old boss. We're just gonna keep filming until we can't anymore. I'm sure the spirits will tell us. Aha, we have arrived at an entrance. Somebody there. <laughs> this reminds me of King's Island's haunts back in the day. This is really cool. I have a feeling I'm going to get a fright. This is a scare zone or a haunt. There are haunt people here. Hello. Oh dear. She does not like me. Good thing she's in stocks. I join you. back even though they don't want me back oh no oh no ah! I knew it this is okay living or dead Dead. Definitely dead. Detached head equals dead. Okay. Only one way out. Ah! Oh no! He got me so good. That is 
next level. All right, I officially got got good on that one. Farewell, I'll be back. All right. <laughs> I will say from what I just did, the pumpkin harvest, or pumpkin eater harvest, it was actually a scare zone, which to me is incredible because that could have easily been a haunted maze. Welcome back guys, how was that ride? Night ride on Mamba complete. Uh, I forgot to mention the head chopper element, which is probably the best head chopper out there. Um, I love that sequence of supports that just gets lower and lower and lower out of the helix. That's just like, oh my god, we're actually going to hit our head on one of the supports. It has to be one of the lowest ones I've ever experienced on any coaster. Very effective. Good night ride. Definitely a front seat ride as I did again. Uh, now we're going to go all the way back to the front of the park. We're going to go back to where we started and then weave our way back because I think that's going to be the most effective way to get everything in. As I realize, two hours left, I'm having a good time. Probably too good of a time. More than enough to keep us busy for that time. I'm not sure if these legs are here year round, but it's a nice touch. Certainly cool. Probably because we're in Malice's Revenge, actually. I believe that's the section. So let's go for a little stroll, shall we? Oh, let's check out your area. Oh no, we might see you later. So this is Outlaw's Revenge, the Scare Zone. An area that I actually didn't check out earlier. So I'm glad I'm here now. This is Malice in Wonderland. I'm enjoying just getting lost in this park. The antique cars, which I believe is where that is located, up there, are still running. There's so much left to do here. I'm already scared that I won't fit it all in. Hello. We love a Mad Hatter. And as you get older, you understand the importance of never being late. It's important. And there he is, hiding all and lonesome in the corner. I don't think he's running. He's sleeping. He doesn't look like he's moved. He also has a Coors Light <laughs> at his feet. Maybe he's sleeping because he's had a little too many. Timberwolf, I've heard, as one of the park's favorites, and it's such a generic wood coaster in a way for me. All fair play. Let's do a night ride and see what we can figure out what all the fuss is about. I wish I could get 
purchase some decent coverage of Timberwolf, but it's just not possible from where it's situated in the park. Uh, it's just, even though it's right over there, there's just so many trees and stuff that cover the actual track that, you know, there's just not a decent shot to uh, benefit for you guys. But at the same time, that's a weird one. So many straightaways. I understand that a Helix used to be on it, so it suffered the same fate as, uh, say, Boss did in the same year, of which was the worst year probably for wood coasters uh, in the knots or the 2000s, because, you know, some classic rides got decimated, I guess, like that one, and also Boss. But uh, yeah, very popular in this park but very tame from my standards. I think Prowler is a far superior roller coaster. It's not bad, it's just not amazing. Non-wheel seat, so definitely was a lot more manageable uh, this time in the back, but it's not that re-rideable. I've had two rides on it one day, one night, and I think I'm good for Timber Wolf, if that's what it's called. Apparently it was called Wildcat at one point. Uh, it might not even be called Timberwolf. It's that unrememberable. This is over here, and I think that we have a decent weight. So we got Blood on the Bayou and Ripper Alley, but we're gonna do Blood on the Bayou first because that is a Kings Island haunt from back in the day, or at least that theme was at Kings Island back in the day, and it was one of my favorite scare mazes slash haunted houses that I experienced at that event. I'll let you know on the way out how I feel about this version of Blood on the Bayou. I'm having a major deja vu moment as I feel like just this very walk and everything about this maze and its outside I've experienced before, but I cannot for the life of me recall where I had. It's a major deja vu. This might be an omen for what's to come. I'll let you know what it's all about once I get back out of the bayou. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie that each maze gets better and better. That was unreal. It's hard to remember everything that was effective, so I kind of want to go through it all, but I am short for time. So claustrophobic, really just a very effective maze, other than those arrows at the ground that I noted that I was like, am I going the right way? Uh, very reminiscent of the original bayous that I did at Kings Island, except this being inside, you have really like a weird sort of like meandering going through a mansion house that all the walls have been like stripped away and uh, I got two authentic good scares in there. They've been getting me at this park and normally I'm not so uh, yeah there was this crazy wall uh, where people just kind of jumped out of these holes that you're like okay one of the holes someone's gonna be in and sure enough I guess the wrong one. Uh, a weird sort of witch's room with people hanging upside down from the ceiling and a weird sort of floating candle table that floated around the space. A large man that was clearly overfed. There was so much going on in this haunt maze that, uh, yeah, this is already, maybe already the best one yet. I'm gonna have to go over it all at the end, but very effective. Patriot, let's do our night ride. changes from my review earlier. A little short and sweet. I definitely like the beauty of that ride. It's a beautiful ride. Certainly would have loved to have done Orient, however. There certainly was on that spot many years ago. Since it's at the front of the park and the first thing people can hit, Lore the Vampire is a walk-on in our next maze. Okay, for the nerdy among us, uh, that was definitely a tree, a danse macabre. That maze, Laura the Vampire, was as large as some singular haunted house attractions. It was that big. I actually started recording a bit halfway through because I thought it was over, but then we go down a level, and then there's an entire basement realm that you go through, a catacombs. Uh, it is a standard sort of vampire mansion theme, so you know what to expect in there but as 100% the old entrance for the old station for Orient Express. So you get to experience that shelter, that building at least when you go through. So it's definitely nostalgic and now I found it. So 
Yeah, that was an excellent maze. That's another 8 out of 10, possibly a 9 out of 10 maze. And I know it's older. There's animatronics in there that you wouldn't even notice they're animatronics. There's so much detail that was put into the walls and everything, skulls that are moving. Uh, yeah, it was unreal. Uh, and now a large bat animatronic that sort of attacks you, or this guy actually introduced you to it. He was hanging from the wall or hanging from the ceiling and he drops and uh, yeah, that was really good. So much so that I'm desperate now to get to these final mazes and I'm gonna prioritize that. I kinda wanna get on Prowler for one more ride at the end of today, but if I don't, I'll be okay because these mazes are that good. We have returned to Ripper Alley in the hope that uh, <laughs> it's a little more welcoming line-wise. It hasn't been that long since we've been here, so we'll see how it is. The other two mazes that we have to do are all the way at the back of the park, so hopefully we can get on quickly. All done with Ripper Street. The line actually moves much quicker. They just make sure you know all the instructions before going in, which is perfectly understandable for a haunt, because, yeah, it's a haunt. A little standard affair. Farewell, governor. Farewell. The, uh, one of the best parts about that particular uh, haunt is uh, listening to Missouri locals try to put on British accents. So, you know, straight from the streets of Sussex is that one, you know? It was a very standard um, haunt, sort of, house, if you will, and theming and that. Um, so you're kind of going to get what I'm going to say right now is that it was definitely the weakest of the ones that I experienced here. This guy has been haunting me all day. There he is again. Oh my god, I said he'd be back and here he is again. Ah, we gotta go. Farewell, my friend. Have a good night. <laughs> See you next year. There was a couple things I remember from that uh, Mays River Street that I wanted to make sure that I mentioned. Uh, the bath was a very kind of a unique touch to the point where the actor that commented as I left was uh, very funny in the line. She's like, don't stare at her while she's taking a bath, that's rude. And if you know what was going on in that bath, well, I certainly wasn't staring at it for those reasons. Uh, but yeah, it was quite a, such a simple touch, but really well effective. And it wasn't even a jump scare or anything, just a cool prop. Uh, in addition to that, the most effective thing in that maze was without question the ghost on the sheet effect that you had to travel through. It really was just a simple like projection on a sheet, but uh, very, very effective in that particular maze. All right, we've got a couple more to do, and then we're done for the day. Two mazes left. Unfortunately, uh, I've climbed that hill two times already, and I need to do it once more. But I have a feeling it might make more sense if I go down and do corn stalkers first and come back to the bloodbath at the end. It was quite a way for this earlier, but there is no wait anymore. We might be able to do three scares. Well, scare mazes and haunted houses, because I definitely want to go through the scare maze, the scare zone beyond Zambezi Zinger again. I am really enjoying my time here at Worlds of Fun Halloween Haunt. I'm going to have to say, I, just because I feel like I'm going to forget to say it on the way out, that this place or this haunt has got a reputation that it does not deserve, or at least from what I was ascertaining from the news surrounding it, because it's been amazing. Uh, the corn stalkers that I just did is the best that I've ever done at any Cedar Fair haunt. Incredible. Maybe the Cedar Point one is close to that or the old Kings Island one But the problem with those is that they're so vast and they're half the size of what I experienced there Plus the claustrophobia the added elements of rooms uh, The haunters are just really into the show. This has been amazing. That was an awesome awesome maze Now if there's one thing that I'll take away from this experience or be critical of it in some manner is that uh, the decor is definitely sparse compared to some of the other haunts that I've experienced in the Cedar Fair chain. 
it is nowhere near an elite level haunt and decor as compared to say Halloween Horror Nights or even Six Flags St. Louis as I experienced last night which I still will vouch is one of the best of these haunts that I've ever done from a decor level I'm getting out of breath this is the first climb or the third climb to the summit of this hill to get to the bloodshed All done with the bloodshed. Oh no! They're coming for me. They want me. They don't want me to leave. If you can see me, I forgot that I should probably sum up a couple of things I forgot about some of these houses that have impressed me. Going back to Cornstalkers, there was actually a bungee performer that jumped out in one section of the maze, which you just don't see at any of the other Cedar Fair uh, haunts or haunted houses. The length, the size of these houses is just amazing. They just keep going on. Bloodbath, no exception. It just kept meandering. So it, it really kind of feels like two different houses merged into one, like a slaughterhouse bloodbath. Uh, so like a hillbilly type of theme and also just like a butcher type of theme. They put it all together and gave you the full package in that one. In addition to that, a couple of very impressive animatronics that uh, in Bloodbath, you had a giant pig that attacked your legs in one room. And then another thing I forgot to mention, in uh, the bayou, they had a giant crocodile that attacked you at the end of that experience too. So just fantastic. Can't say enough about what I've experienced here. Uh, it has been the complete opposite of what I expected. I'm not gonna lie. I would like to get on Zambezi Zinger as my final ride, as a night ride, but that may have to wait for another day because this is a haunt that I think I'm coming back to. That is it. We refer, we return to familiar turf. I feel like there's an announcement imminent, but no. Well, there is an announcement for me. Sometimes you come to a park and you have certain expectations that really predominate and kind of get you prepared for a bad experience. And then the park completely proves you wrong and that park is definitely worlds of fun. I know a lot of vloggers and influencers and people who have just generally visited this park have had not many good things to say about it, but I honestly have had just one of the best experiences I've ever had at a Cedar Fair Park here today. It hasn't been without its complications, but it's just been very welcoming. The staff have been awesome. The people here have been awesome. I love the layout of this park. I love the history behind it. I love the feel of it. Uh, it's just aesthetically really a marvel in its own right. There was a lot of thought that was put together, or a lot of thought went into the design of this place. That all said, you have the haunt, which I completely have been flabbergasted by, solely for the houses and the scare zones. That is the main reason why. They have been literally par excellence for Cedar Fair chain houses. Park is cleared right out. It wasn't busy today obviously but uh, I at least got my final ride on Mamba there which was excellent in the back. forgot to mention that I actually did a non-wheel seat for Wolverine Wildcat for that final ride. It still didn't really change anything as far as uh, my appreciation for the ride because it was pretty mediocre uh, but it was definitely smoother which is definitely worth mentioning. How to get out of this park. It is a bit tricky. You got to go right of the Trabant barn because there's a little bit of a dead end in the Planet Snoopy area. Given that it's so spacious and there's nobody here, it's nice to get a lice. With the lack of availability of Zambezi Zinger for the evening portion, it does point out a very glaring issue with this park, which is they need another major roller coaster of some sort and something reliable 
that uh, at least will treat the people that come here deservedly for their, you know, their patience, their time, their money, and everything in support of this park for 50 years. This park has had some legendary coasters in it. Uh, no, not big ones, but legendary. So it's odd that they have as little as they have currently. And I'm sure that seems odd to say considering that Zambezi Zinger just opened only this year. But that's just, uh, if you look at the history of the, the rides in this park, they uh, waste no time in getting rid of a roller coaster if it's just not up to uh, uh, the performance level that they want. So, yeah, it's time for another one. They got no shortage of space in this place. It is a massive property. Uh, it just, when you get here and you realize, like, it really is kind of sandwiched in the middle of, uh, you know, sort of like pasture land in a way, like large grass fields that surround it. So, yeah, definitely look forward to coming back for hopefully another new attraction in the next couple of years. This has been a long wrap up, but I had just such a good time that I feel like I justify making sure that every detail is actually mentioned. And like I said, I'm probably going to be coming back here in the shorter term than the longer term. Certainly not a lifetime as it's taken for me to get here for the first time. Love Worlds of Fun. Do not believe what you hear about this park. Um, I'm here on my own uh, in a circumstance of which this is probably the most difficult that you could possibly be coming to a place like this and it was seamless. So yeah, definitely Worlds of Fun. One of my favorite Cedar Fair parks I didn't think I'd be saying that, leaving the exit today. And not that many bucket list parks left for me. I have two major ones to hit in the coming days uh, in the vlogs coming up. You can probably guess what the next one is. It's pretty obvious if you know this area. Um, I'm definitely excited about that tomorrow. But uh, for now, I'm gonna sleep tight and really enjoy the fact that I had such an amazing time here at Worlds of Fun. Thanks for dropping in.